Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video, and I am kind of just want to create a discussion and see what you guys think. Motor Trend has announced that the 2015 Mustang will come with an independent rear suspension. Now this isn't new news or anything, but I just want to see what you guys think if it should stick with the live solid axle that it currently has, or if it should be switching to an independent rear suspension and getting with the times, so to speak. So I'm going to present uh, the arguments for each side, some of the benefits of each um, an independent rear suspension versus a live axle, and then I want you to tell me why, which one it should have and why. So the reason for switching to an independent rear suspension well, real, real world driving is, is pretty much the biggest thing. Uh, roads aren't perfect. They're not perfectly flat and there's potholes, there's bumps, there's gravel that'll get thrown on the road, and you want your tires to be able to react independently of one another rather than dependently of one another. So, as you're going around a corner and you're hitting these different things, if you have a solid axle, both tires are affected and you can lose traction much more easily than having an independent rear suspension where one tire can remain in perfect contact while the other reacts to an obstacle. So this means better traction and a safer vehicle. Another thing, unsprung mass. The mass of the solid axle is not supported by the springs and the shocks, so it's unsprung weight, and the greater that is, the less traction you have, basically, because you've got less mass that is supported by your suspension, so less mass that can react to the road uh, in a predictable manner. Another thing is weight balance. Now, independent rear suspensions are a little heavier, but what this allows for the Mustang, which is a front-engine rear-wheel drive car, like many sports cars, is that it puts more mass at the back, so it evens out the weight distribution, so it'll be closer to 50-50, which is ideal, or what many consider to be ideal. Um, and finally, whether or not uh, you'll agree with this, but marketing. So saying that you have an independent rear suspension will get people to buy it simply because you're saying it has the latest technology. Even if someone doesn't know what the difference between a live axle and an independent suspension is, they'll hear independent rear suspension, know that it's what everyone uses, BMW, Lamborghini, Ferrari, all the big names. Pretty much all companies now that have, have sports cars with their rear wheel drive have independent rear suspensions. So everyone knows this, they associate ind independent rear suspensions with top of the line modern technology, and so they buy it. So simply by putting in an independent rear suspension, Ford may see a financial gain from people saying, oh, they've gotten with the times, now they've got the latest technology, yes, I'm going to buy it now. Even if, say that their uh, solid axle is better than, say, the Camaro's independent suspension, um, which I, that's to be argued, I don't really know myself, but say it were, people wouldn't say that it was. If you were to ask someone, oh, is the Camaro's independent rear suspension or the Mustang's live axle a better suspension? Everyone will pretty much just say the independent rear suspension if they have no knowledge of the subject, just because it's the modern thing. So Ford could see a financial gain, and that's an argument for doing it. Not really an argument from an engineer's perspective, but an argument nonetheless. Uh, reasons to keep the live axle. Some of the benefits of the live axle. Well, it's cheap. It costs less for Ford to make these than to put in a independent rear suspension. So what that means is the price is lower. So if they were to put in independent rear suspensions, you could expect a little bit more expensive price for the Mustang. Um, also, this doesn't require future research, which goes into that expense. No research, no development, or not no, but little compared to if they have to design a whole new suspension which they'll likely revise the ones that they've already put into action before um, and kind of test it out rather than just develop something totally new, but, but who knows, maybe they'll just do something totally new. Uh, live axle, it's strong, it's durable, it will last, um, and it's very simple design, and there's, there's uh, some beauty to that in it. Um, and it can take a high amount of power, and there's fewer parts. So, I mean, it's just, it's very reliable, it's strong, and it, it does everything you need. Also, great for tracks and drag racing. When you have perfect road conditions, there's not that big of an advantage of a independent rear suspension versus a solid axle because you don't have, it, it doesn't matter, your tires are pretty much going to be at the same level um, reacting the same way um, versus real road conditions where there's, there's road imperfections. And finally, a live axle, though it's a heavy, un, heavy sprung mass, or unsprung mass, I'm sorry, uh, 
it is a lighter option than an independent rear suspension. So an independent rear suspension would add weight. So by keeping the live axle, they will save um, a small amount of weight, which weight is important for nearly every aspect in car performance. So there is a, a pretty decent argument to that saying that it, it weighs less. Um, so now I just want to hear what you think. Should Ford be switching uh, to an independent rear suspension or should they keep the live axle um, and keep their kind of history that they have with this suspension and this vehicle? So just let me know in the comments below. Thanks.